Hello there. It's time for another biology lesson. And today we'll be talking about the cell and its environment. This is the first part of a two-part video, the cell and its environment. Now moving along, the objective of this lesson is to help learners to describe how materials moving and out of the cell through active and passive transport. But, uh, learners will be able to differentiate between active and passive transport, describe the process of diffusion and its types, state examples of diffusion in nature. Now moving along as it means as an introduction, cells may be self-sustaining units of life, but they don't live in isolation. Their survival depends on their interaction with their external environment. Substances moving and out of cells through they are semi-permeable cell membrane. There are three different processes through which materials can move in and out of a cell. They are diffusion, osmosis, and both of these processes are passive transport and active transport. So you can see right here the demonstration or the pictorial representation of passive transport. This is diffusion. This is um, facilitated diffusion. Then we have active transport. So, we'll be describing these processes shortly. Now, moving along, we need to um, familiarize ourselves with terms that we'll hear as we look um, at this lesson, cell and its environment. Now, passive transport. Passive transport is movement across the cell membrane that doesn't need energy from the cell. Active transport describes movement across the cell membrane that needs energy from the cell. Concentration gradient is, is a distinction within the concentration of a substance across an area. Equilibrium is a condition within which concentration of a substance e is equal throughout an area. Diffusion is the movement of a substance from a region of high concentration to the region of lower concentration caused by the random motion of particles of the substances. Now we can go on and on and on. I want to pause this video. Go through these terms very carefully and understand them because you come across these terms, uh, these terms as we go along in this lesson. Now let's move to passive transport. What is passive transport? Passive transport is the fundamental movement of ions and other molecular substances within the cells along the concentration gradient without any external energy. It is also known as passive diffusion. So you can see this is the cell membrane right here, the, the phospholipid bilayer. Now it talks about materials moving in and out of this out of the cell through the cell membrane from a region of high concentration to the region of low concentration. So we have what we call facilitated diffusion as well. In the case of facilitated diffusion, we need a protein carrier or a channel protein to ensure that those materials move from a region of high concentration to the, lower, to the um, area of low concentration. There are four types of passive transport. We have simple diffusion, facilitated diffusion, filtration and... Now, active transport. This is the movement of ion solutes across a semi-permeable membrane from a region of lower concentration to the region of higher concentration that is the movement of particles against concentration gradient utilizing energy in form of ATP adenosine triphosphate in the process processes involving active transport are movement of sodium ions into the plasma from the red blood cells movement of potassium ions from the red blood cells from plasma in both cases, sodium and potassium ions moved from places of lower concentration to places of higher concentration, passes through the cell membrane of red blood cells. This helps to prevent hemolysis. Another example is the movement of sodium and potassium ions during the action and resting potential in and out of a neuron. This helps to generate electricity needed for the nerve impulse transmission. Now, you, as you can see here, this is a picture that describes active transport. It is the movement of substances from low concentration to high concentration through the cell membrane. Now, energy is needed. It's like when you are riding a bike up a hill. Obviously, you will need energy to pedal the bicycle up that hill. But if you're going downhill using a bicycle, you don't need to, uh, 
you don't need to pe pedal the bike to get it down you don't need any energy to do that and that describes passive transport but in active transport you need to move the material from a region of lower concentration to the region of higher concentration through um, using energy using an energy source which in this case is adenosine triphosphate you can see it here the substance is being moved from low concentration gradient to high concentration gradient with the aid of energy from the cell in the form of adenosine triphosphate now moving along we'll be looking at uh, the various types of passive transport starting with diffusion now what is diffusion diffusion is defined as the process by which molecules or ions of a substance that is gases and liquids move from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration until they are evenly distributed the substances involved in diffusion may be liquid gases or solids the rate or speed of diffusion is controlled by a number of factors which include state of matter so obviously we have three states of matter solid liquid and gas and diffusion will be faster in gases than in solids and liquids and diffusion is slowest in solids now the molecular size the size of particles also affects the rate of diffusion now if a substance uh, is in powdered form if a substance is in powdered form compared to that of a solid form the one of powder will spread very quickly faster than when uh, the substance is in uh, uh, is in pellets you know so the size of the molecule also matters substances of smaller molecular size will diffuse faster than substance with high molecular size now differences in concentration now if the difference in concentration between two points are very um, high it will take time for the uh, molecule to diffuse throughout uh, throughout uh, the space than when the concentration difference is low if the concentration difference is low then the substance will diffuse very fast and we arrive at equilibrium faster than that so now this picture here shows diffusion it demonstrates diffusion so you can see we have let's assume that we have a semi permeable semi permeable mem membrane and we have this red molecule here you can see that is more here in this part than here so obviously the movement of particles will be in this direction as you as you see right here but if you look at these blue molecules that you see here you can see that they are more on this side than on this side so the movement of this molecule will be towards this direction and at the end of the day after some time there will be a uniform distribution of both water and sugar molecule this red molecule here is talking about sugar while this one is talking about water now this also describes diffusion of substances you can see that this substance is moving from high concentration to lower concentration through the cell membrane this is an example of diffusion in cells now facilitated diffusion is another example of uh, diffusion now facilitated diffusion through a non-specific or specific transport are usually a protein carrier or a protein channel so you can see that these substances you see there's a channel for that substance to move from the region of high concentration to the region of low concentration now in this case you can see that there's a carrier protein the protein carries the substance from higher concentration to in, into the cell which has low concentration of the same substance now moving along we'll be talking about examples of diffusion in nature first the importance of diffusion to flowering plants diffusion is important to flowering plants in the following ways it allows for movement of carbon dioxide through the stomata of the leaves during respiration two there's movement of carbon dioxide through the stomata into the leaves during photosynthesis now water vapor leaves and uh, leaving the leaves during transpiration is another example movement of oxygen into the leaves through the stomata during respiration is another example of diffusion in flowering plants now diffusion in animals diffusion plays important role in the life of animals through the following processes number one the intake of oxygen or nutrients from mother to fetus through the placenta two gaseous exchange in mammals occurs in the lungs during respiration in this case 
um, there is a, an exchange of gases between the alveoli present in the lungs and the capillaries that carries the blood to the lungs. 3. Gaseous exchange in many cells and organisms. For example, amoeba takes in oxygen and gets rid of carbon dioxide by simple diffusion. 4. There is also movement of carbon dioxide from the lung, from the lung capillaries into the alveoli, which comes out through our nose. Diffusion in nature or non-living conditions. Diffusion is also very important in nature or non-living condition through the following processes. Number one, the spread of smell or odor of perfume from a person or a corner or from the corner of a room. Two, diffusion of molecules, gases and liquids in iodine, potassium permanganate and copper sulfate solution. Solutions. Three, the spread of insecticides in a room. Four, the spread of the smell of gases released from the anus. These are all examples of diffusion. Now, with this, we have come to the end of the first part of this lesson, cell and its environment. Now, let's take a quick look at the summary. Substances can move in and out of the cell through its semi-permeable cell membrane. There are three different processes through which materials can move in and out of a cell. They are diffusion, osmosis, and active transport. Passive transport is the fundamental movement of ions and other molecular substances within the cells along the concentration gradient without any external energy. Active transport is the movement of ions solutes across a semi-permeable membrane from a region of lower concentration to the region of higher concentration that is against concentration gradient utilizing energy in form of atp in the process diffusion is defined as the process by which molecules or ions of a substance that is gases and liquid liquids move from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration until they are evenly distributed there are basically two types of diffusion simple and facilitated diffusion now with this we are going to go into the assessment i want you to pause this video and attempt to answer these questions and please don't forget to subscribe like and share this video till i see you again in the next lesson